I am on Old Route 66, right on the Texas and New Mexico border. I'm about to head into New Mexico, but first, I wanted to check out the Glen Rio Ghost Town. This is one of the several abandoned towns on Old Route 66 that the interstate basically destroyed. This was thriving way back in the Route's heyday, but now this is one of the victims of the interstate. You could consider this one of the real Radiator Springs. Uh, so we're gonna go see what's left of Glen Rio. Glen Rio was founded as a Rock Island Railroad town in 1903 and started to grow a bit when the Ozark Trail passed through here. This section of the old Ozark Auto Trail was the predecessor to Route 66. This dusty two-lane road then became Route 66 in 1926. So there was a new influx of California-bound travelers passing through Glen Rio. Over the ensuing decades, new services were opened here along the Mother Road in this town between Amarillo and Tucumcari. One of those businesses was the State Line Cafe and Texas Longhorn Motel, which now sits abandoned. Let's explore this place a bit. Some of the original sign is still there. This motel was advertised as the first motel in Texas or the last motel in Texas. Since it was either the first or last motel, travelers came across on Route 66 in Texas, depending on which way they were going. The motel and cafe was run by Homer Arisman and his family. They first built and opened this State Line Cafe building in 1953, and then added on the Texas Longhorn Motel in 1955. While Mother Road traffic was still going pretty good, that same year the Railroad Depot closed, which was a hit for the residents of Glen Rio, whose population never exceeded more than a few dozen. But in 1976, the Big Bad Interstate opened and all the traffic began bypassing Glen Rio. So this motel and cafe, along with just about every other business in Glen Rio, closed soon after that. All right, let's head inside the State Line Cafe. This cafe building also had a Phillips 66 gas station, and this was the garage for the station. Honestly, I don't think this cafe building is in too bad of shape, considering that it's been abandoned for nearly 45 years. There's some vandalism and graffiti, but at least this location hasn't been completely painted over like others. I like how this chair from the 60s or 70s is still here and in fairly good condition. It's very windy here at this desert ghost town. This appears to have been a bathroom. The tiling is pretty cool and it's largely still in place. And that's a toilet. Looks like the other restroom had green tiling. This was the dining room of the cafe. It appears that its walls were turquoise cinder block. Not too uncommon for diners of the time. One seating booth is still in place here. This was the kitchen. Some preparation tables are still here. This appears to be a back utility room. This part of the cafe is pretty messed up. I wonder if Elvis Presley ever stopped here. He definitely drove by it several times. Well, that was really cool. Now let's take a look at the Texas Longhorn Motel, a classic Route 66 courtyard motel, though the motor court parking has been reclaimed by nature. There's quite a few long vacant motel rooms. At least I hope they're all vacant. All right, let's go into the first room. 
Oh, there's an anthill. I'm gonna stay away from that. This room actually looks like someone has either lived in here or squatted in here fairly recently. There's a mattress on the floor and that box fan doesn't look too old. The Airsmans probably lived in this section when they were running the place. And this is the kitchen. Several appliances are still here. That also appears to be a relatively modern washing machine. I definitely think someone has lived here since 1976. Let's take a look at some of the motel rooms. I like that wallpaper that's still here. And there's an old TV. Looks like a lot of the rooms shared bathrooms in between each other. Many motels from this time period did have shared bathrooms, but it's pretty rare to see that now. This is some serious squalor at this motel, but to be honest, there's probably motels dirtier than this that are still operating. So this is a pretty interesting piece of Route 66 history, left in ruins. A little ways east of the State Line Cafe on the Texas side, there's this 1950 Texaco station. Glen Rio's gas stations were all in Texas because the New Mexico state gas tax was higher. And next to it is the Brownlee Diner, which later was named the Little Juarez Cafe. And it opened in 1952 and is built in the art modern style. That is so cool. There are lots of no trespassing signs around these two structures, so I won't get close. The Little Juarez Cafe here was actually the inspiration for Doc Hudson's racing museum in the Disney Pixar Cars movies. In the movies, the museum was built inside the abandoned Glen Rio Motel in Radiator Springs, named after this real ghost town. That's really awesome. There's another long empty Art Deco garage. Also, off the rarely used Interstate Exit Zero for Glen Rio, there's this more modern Chevron gas station which is also abandoned. Right over there you can see I-40, and right about equivalent to me is the New Mexico-Texas state line, so this is literally the state line right here. There are older than 66 crosses between the states. Okies escaping starvation and financial ruin during the Dust Bowl would have passed right through Glen Rio on this very road. Later on, scenes for the 1940 Grapes of Wrath movie directed by John Ford and starring Henry Fonda were filmed right here in Glen Rio on Route 66. Here's the original roadbed of Route 66 on the New Mexico side. It's become a dirt road since the original Mother Road asphalt has been pulled up to avoid maintenance. When I do the entire original route, this section's probably going to take a while and be a little bit dirty. Now in New Mexico, this concrete building was the State Line Bar, built in 1935. Since Texas was a comparatively dry state, Glen Rio's bar was here in New Mexico just over the state line. In 1973, the owner and bartender, Desi Leach, was stabbed and robbed inside here, and she sadly died from her wounds. The murderer was apprehended, but he only served four years for his cold-blooded murder of this innocent woman, and still no one really knows why she was killed. But her murder caused the state line bar to close, and it was left exactly as it was in the 1970s. Behind the bar is the state line motel. This structure housed the motel rooms, and was also built around 1935. This is Broyles Mobile Gas Station, which was built in 1925. It's now about 95 years old and is still standing. Barely. The awning is still holding up, but the gas pumps are long gone. And here's the collapsed interior of Broyles Station. 
This is the Glen Rio, New Mexico Post Office. Being a town built between two states, there were several problems, particularly with tax rights, but also with the mail. Their mail would arrive at the train depot on the Texas side of town, but it would then have to be transported here to the post office in New Mexico. This was the last business to remain in Glen Rio, and apparently it still had an active post box into the 2010s. So that was the Glen Rio ghost town. Very sad to see this Route 66 town so long abandoned and fading away, but that does add a certain intrigue and fascination to the place. If you'd like to see other Route 66 and abandoned videos, then please subscribe to my channel and check out my other videos. And thanks for watching!